Hey, Phil Plate from BadAstronomy.com once again, doing my live chat as I try to do every week, and I just got a great question. All I have to do is find it in this huge list of questions. And Oh, here it is. It's from Nick1655, and he, I assume he, asks, how many individual objects can stay in a Lagrange point? Well, a Lagrange point is a place in space where the gravity between two objects balances. Now, you can imagine if you had two objects, like my squishy brain of science and my wonderful Australian candy minty of science, and I hold them up here, and let's say this is much more massive than this, okay? The gravity of these two objects would balance at some point between them, right? Something, if I put a, a dust moat right here, this will pull on it and this will pull on it, but since this is more massive, it pulls on it harder. So the two points, the two gravities will balance closer to the minty since its gravity is weaker than this. Somewhere over here is where the two gravities would balance. And you'd say, oh, that's where the gravity balances. But it gets more complicated than that. If these two guys are going around each other, there's a centrifugal force to the outside. And yes, centrifugal. It is a real force. Get over it. Um, if, as soon as you're doing that, there's a force outwards. And if you try to solve the equations to figure out where the gravity balances, including this force outwards, it gets horribly complicated. But Lagrange did this like 200 years ago or something like that, mathematician, and found that there were five balance points. There's a point between them, there's a point on the opposite side of, of them, and there are two points as they go around each other, there's two points that balance too. 60 degrees ahead in the orbit, if I hold them up like this, so they form an equilateral triangle, and 60 degrees behind in the orbit, so they also form an equilateral triangle. And they gave them the numbers L1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, L for Lagrange. Um, it turns out that uh, some of these points are more stable than others. In other words, in the L1 point between the two guys, if you try to, if you nudge something a little bit closer to one of these two objects, the gravity of that object will uh, become stronger than the other one and the particle will fall in. And so that's an unstable uh, point. But it turns out the L4 and L5 points, which are the ones 60 degrees ahead and behind the, the object going around the bigger object, um, that's a stable point. And so you can put an object there and it will stay there. If you even tweak it a little bit, it falls back. You can kind of think of it as like a, a, a hill or a valley or a, a cup. And if you, if you put a ball bearing at the bottom of a cup and push it, it'll just eventually fall back to the bottom of the cup. That's almost precisely how those Lagrange points work. Uh, it turns out that um, Jupiter orbiting, if this is Jupiter and this is the Sun, there are these points ahead and behind Jupiter. They call, they're called the Trojan points, and I'll get to that in a sec. It was discovered that there were lots of asteroids in these positions orbiting the Sun at the same distance as Jupiter, but again, 60 degrees ahead, 60 degrees behind it. And they were being named after, um, you, you name, at this point, uh, they were being named after Greek and Trojan uh, legends from mythology, and so they just decided to start calling those the Trojan points, the Trojan asteroids. Um, and uh, 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 another good point is the L2 point. So let's say this is the Sun now, and this is the Earth. Oh, where's my squishy Earth ball? Oh well, it's too far to find. Let's say this is the Sun now, and this is the Earth. There's another point outside the Earth, and you can put telescopes there, and it's, they, they remain stable. It's about a million miles out from the Earth. And so it's, it's still, you know, really far from the sun. This is 93 million miles. You go another million miles out, and that point orbits the sun at the same speed as the Earth. You can put telescopes there, point them out into space, and you're always getting a view of space pointing away from the sun. So NASA uses rockets to put spacecraft there so that they remain very cold. They can always keep their back to the sun, and they can observe the sky. So that's where, for example, the Wilkeson... Uh, microwave anisotropy pro uh, uh, probe is, is, has been placed. The WMAP, Wilkinson mic um, Microwave Anisotropy Probe, that is very difficult to say, um, observes the, the sky and the Earth and the Sun would be a nuisance to that telescope. So it keeps its back turned to them and looks out on the sky and that's what mapped the microwave background, the, the leftover fireball of the Big Bang. That's where the James Webb Space Telescope is going to be put. This is the successor to Hubble. It's a really good place to put telescopes. And so it turns out that these regions are big enough that you can put lots of stuff there. There are a bunch of Trojan asteroids in the Trojan points of uh, Jupiter's orbit. Um, the Earth-Moon system has, has these things as well, but because of the sun's gravity, it messes everything up. 
Um, but you can put lots of objects there. So, you know, at some point you get so many objects there that they'll start bumping into each other and everything. Um, but, you know, theoretically there could be millions of, of motes of dust or one or two really big objects. So, um, it, it, I think the more interesting question is not how many things you can put there, but the fact that these things exist at all. And that in many cases they're a good place to actually put um, a spacecraft. And in fact, the L5 Society back in the 1970s wanted to put space stations basically at the Earth's L5 and L4 points. And um, I thought that was a, it's still a pretty good idea and maybe someday we'll do that. Um, it's a good place to put things. It doesn't take much energy once you're in orbit to get to these, to these uh, Lagrange points. Um, and so uh, it could very well be that in a hundred years or so, uh, we'll have thriving space colonies that exist and they'll be so far from the Earth that the Earth will be basically, you know, a dot in the sky, a bright dot. Um, but they'll be self-sufficient, stable colonies, and that, that might be the future of, of mankind. Wouldn't that be awesome?